Chapter 10 It was quite a large hole, the sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox might have made. James knelt down in front of it and poked his head and shoulders inside. He crawled in, he kept on crawling. This isn't a hole, he thought excitedly. It's a tunnel! The tunnel was damp and murky and all around him there were the curious bittersweet smell of fresh peach. The floor was soggy under his knees and the walls were wet and sticky and peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. He was crawling uphill now as though the tunnel were leading straight towards the very centre of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds he paused and took a bite out of the wall. The peach flesh was sweet and juicy and marvellously refreshing. He crawled on for several more yards and then suddenly, bang! The top of his head bumped into something extremely hard blocking his way. He glanced up in front of him. There was a solid wall that seemed, at first, as though it were made of wood. He touched it with his fingers. It certainly felt like wood, except that it was very jagged and full of deep grooves. Good heavens, he said. I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. Then he noticed that there was a small door cut into the face of the peach stone. He gave it a push, it swung open. He crawled through it, and before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, Look who's here! And another one said, We've been waiting for you! James stopped and stared at the speakers, his face white with horror. He started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit down again on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he had come, but the doorway had disappeared. There was now only a solid brown wall behind him.